We first told you about the tiny helicopter Ingenuity and the one-ton rover Perseverance nearly a year ago, before they left Earth. But they've come a very long way since then. In February, they landed in a hazardous and previously unexplored part of Mars called the Jezero Crater, where Perseverance will be looking for signs of ancient life. Last month, Ingenuity disconnected from Perseverance's belly and made history, performing the first flights ever in the atmosphere of another planet. It's hard to imagine, but worth remembering as you watch what we're about to show you that this all happened millions of miles away in outer space. The story will continue in a moment. Last month, in this desolate Martian crater, 170 million miles from Earth, Perseverance posed for a selfie with Ingenuity, the little helicopter it had just dropped off. Two weeks later, the rover's cameras recorded Ingenuity's historic first flight, hovering 10 feet off the ground for 30 seconds. It may not look like much, but for those who'd worked so long to make it happen, it was a reason to rejoice. Project manager Mimi Ong led the team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California that's been working on Ingenuity for six years. How hard is it to fly a helicopter on Mars? Very, very, very hard. <laughs> we really, uh, truly started with the question of, is it possible? A, a lot of people thought it, it could not be done. Because it's really counterintuitive. I mean, you need atmosphere the, for the blades to push, atmosphere to get lived. The atmosphere on Mars is completely different than the world. The atmosphere at Mars is so thin. I mean, the room we're in, right, it's compared to that, it was 1% of the atmospheric density over there. So the question of really, can you generate enough lift, you know, to really build, to lift up anything, that was the fundamental question. In subsequent flights, ingenuity has gone longer and farther traveling for about two minutes and nearly the length of three football fields. It is a triumph not only for NASA, but for its partners in the private yeah, sector who help make yeah. various parts You're of the helicopter. Mailbox, don't let it go, don't freak out. Matt Keenan has a history of making <laughs> unusual things that can fly. And then I'm He's an engineer at a company see. called Aerovironment, which produces drones for military and civilian use. I mean, so, that's incredible. So Ten years ago, for a military research project, Keenan and his team created this robotic hummingbird, which has a tiny camera on board. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> there it is. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Keenan and engineer Ben Pippenberg led the aerovironment team that created Ingenuity's rotors, motors, and landing gear. Why was this so challenging? because it has to be a spacecraft as well as an aircraft. Um, and, and flying it as, a, as an aircraft on Mars is pretty challenging because of the density of the air that's similar to about Earth at 100,000 feet. How do you go about it? Well, so building everything extremely lightweight is uh, really, really critical. The helicopter's blades, for example, are made of a styrofoam-like material coated with carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're stiff and strong. Get a sense of how Oh my lightweight gosh. and stiff that is. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, weighs nothing. But incredibly light. Here we go, taking off. This is the first time they've shown an outsider this version of Ingenuity, which they plan to use for education and research. They call it Terry. A lift off. <laughs> Here on Earth, Terry's blades are spinning at about 400 revolutions per minute. On Mars, in the thin atmosphere, they'd have to spin six times faster to generate the same lift. And then, and then land. Ingenuity costs $85 million to build and operate. Terry, a lot less, but it's still nerve-wracking to be handed its controls. All right, go ahead. You've got it. Slide it right. You can push it all the way to the right if you want. Slide left. Wow. I'll bring it up a little bit. Now stop. The joysticks we use to fly Terry are of no use on Mars. Radio signals take too long to get there. All right, let me take over now. I've okay. switched you out, and Phew. we'll go back to the... <laughs> Even someone as good at flying drones and hummingbirds as Matt Keenan couldn't fly a helicopter on Mars. Here's what happened in 2014 in a test chamber that replicated the atmosphere on Mars when Keenan tried to use a joystick to fly an early version of Ingenuity. Surprise! Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, All right. So, so much for that vehicle. So this very quick demonstration is it should you a human being can't respond quickly enough to control it. Exactly. So engineers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory equipped Ingenuity 
with a computerized system that allows it to stabilize itself and navigate on its own. In 2016, the new system aced the chamber test. The blades are being commanded, you know, four or five hundred times per second. They proved it could fly, but Ingenuity still had to weigh under four pounds and fit in the belly of Perseverance. Five, five. four, engine ignition, two, one. And it had to be tough enough to survive the journey to Mars. And liftoff. On July 30th, 2020, Perseverance and Ingenuity took off from Cape Canaveral. Nearly seven months later, as this simulation shows, the spacecraft's heat shield hit the Martian atmosphere, going 12,000 miles per hour. In Perseverance, ready to execute entry, descent, and landing on her own. As he sat in the control room, Al Chen, the leader of the landing team, had absolutely no control. Radio signals would take about 11 minutes to travel from Earth to Mars. The spacecraft was pre-programmed to descend, maneuver, and pick a landing site on its own. All the work his colleagues hoped to do on Mars would be impossible if his part of the mission failed. How long have you been working on this mission? Coming up on nine years or so. Really? That's a lot of work for seven minutes of if nine, nine years of work, seven minutes of terror. It's done if the parachute doesn't work. That's right. You know, no one wants to be that, uh, the guy that drops the baton. No landing by a spacecraft has ever been recorded as well as this one. There were six cameras capturing it all from different angles. The parachute deployed, then the heat shield fell away like a lens cap, and Perseverance got its first look at the ground. This is not a simulation. This is what it looks like to parachute onto Mars. How fast is it moving at this point? Yeah, we're still going about 350 miles an hour and still slowing down. So it looks gentle here, yeah. but in fact, you're, it's falling at more than 300 miles an hour. That's right. We're heading straight down at, uh, at near race car speeds. Below lay a series of safe landing spots, but the wind was blowing the spacecraft towards more treacherous territory to the east, and Perseverance sent a message to Earth saying the thrusters it needed to slow down might not be working properly. So you get a reading saying the, the jets that are going to help it right. slow down and control the landing, that they're not working. The so what do you power. do? Nothing you can do, right? Everything's already happened. That's the mind-bending part of this, right? You are sweating now. You yeah, exactly. I'm right it. back there again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Altitude of about 300 meters. To Al Chen's relief, Perseverance's computerized landing system did what it was designed to do. It found a suitable landing spot even in rocky terrain. And despite the warning, the thrusters worked. You can see them kicking up dust as they fire to slow the spacecraft down. Sky can maneuver has started. The descent stage, known as the Sky Crane, lowered Perseverance to the ground. It hovered for a moment, then flew off to crash a safe distance away. And there goes the descent wow. stage. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. So at that point, big sigh of relief. Um, you know, I almost uh, collapsed over this console. Ever since Perseverance landed on the Red Planet, a team of engineers, programmers, and scientists here on Earth have been living on Mars time. It's their job to monitor the rover's health and tell it where to go and how to search for signs of life. While Perseverance sleeps to conserve energy during the freezing Martian nights, the team on Earth analyzes the photographs and instrument readings it's sent back. They then prepare a list of things for it to do the following morning when it wakes up. And so it's just after midnight on Mars. The vehicle's asleep. Project manager Matt Wallace explained that a day on Mars is 40 minutes longer than on Earth team's schedule is constantly changing. So all the people here are, are Mars night shift workers. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to think of it, yeah. But I mean, working night shift is tough enough, but this is a night shift that's constantly shifting. Constantly moving, yeah. that's right, yeah. On Perseverance's fourth day on Mars, it swiveled the powerful camera on its mast and took a look around. A space enthusiast named Sean Doran put the images together, set them to music, and posted the movie on YouTube. Even one of the top scientists on the project was moved when he saw it. You know, I went and got a beer and watched this thing scroll by. And, and that, mo that was the moment when I felt like I was there. Ken Farley leads the science team that will direct Perseverance through the Jezero Crater. It's an area that scientists have long wanted to search for signs of ancient life that may be hidden in the rocks. The oldest evidence of life on Earth is about three and a half billion years old. Those rocks were deposited in a shallow sea 
This crater that you see here was a lake three and a half billion years ago. So we are looking at the same environment and the same time period on two different planets. And if it's determined, however long in the future, that no, there was not ever life, what does that mean? The place where Perseverance landed here in Jezero Crater uh, is the most habitable time period on Mars and the most habitable environment that we know about. This is, this is as good as it gets, at least with our current understanding of what Mars has to offer. And if we don't find life here, it does make us worry that perhaps it doesn't exist anywhere. Perseverance hasn't strayed far from its landing site yet, but its telescopic camera has already spotted a large number of boulders that Ken Farley says he didn't expect to see in the middle of an ancient lake. So this has surprised you? Absolutely, yeah. So what did those boulders tell you? The, the most reasonable interpretation is a flood. You don't have fast flowing water out in the middle of the lake. You get fast flowing water in a river. And so what that's telling us is there was a river that was capable of transporting boulders that were this big. So what, the lake would have gone down perhaps and then later on there was a flood? Yeah, exactly. Perseverance was supposed to leave Ingenuity behind after a 30-day demonstration of its flying ability. The NASA officials recently said they'll keep the duo together for another month to explore how rovers and helicopters might work together in the future. The fastest that Perseverance was designed to travel is a tenth of a mile per hour. Ingenuity has already gone 80 times faster, according to project manager Mimi Ong. Adding an aerial vehicle, a flying vehicle for space exploration will be game changing. It frees you in a way. Absolutely, yes. So a flying vehicle, a rotorcraft would allow us to get to places we simply can't access today, like sites of steep cliffs, you know, inside deep crevices. After Perseverance explores the floor of Jezero Crater, it'll head towards what's believed to be the remnant of an ancient river delta, where billions of years ago, conditions should have been ripe for microorganisms to exist. As this simulation shows, the rover's robotic arm can collect about 40 core samples of rock that'll be sealed in special tubes and left on the planet's surface. NASA plans to send another mission to Mars to retrieve the tubes and bring them back to Earth. In about 10 years, Ken Farley says, scientists examining those samples may be confronted with a new and perplexing question. How do you look for life that may not be life as you know it? We've never had to do that before. We've never had to actually ask the question. Is there a form of life that we can't even conceive of? Yeah, we're going to have to conceive of it. I think to, that's the whole point of this. We're going to have to start conceiving of life as we don't know it. If all goes according to plan, Perseverance will be making tracks on Mars for years to come. Since it's carrying the first working audio microphones on the red planet, we'll leave you with what it sounds like as the one-ton rover slowly moves across the vast, lonely expanses of Mars. Explore the Martian surface. This is something that we've never done before. At 60MinutesOvertime.com, sponsored by iBrands.